those of us who grow some of our own food, composting goes hand in hand with the process. And also, if we are just to grow just some of our own fruit and vegetables, we, then we can lower our carbon footprint. Peel the worms, wiggly worms. Hot food, um, cooked food, sorry, mm. and it's, it, it, it gets <laughs> I'll put them back. <laughs> it's closed. Awesome. I was involved just prior to um, COVID lockdown, I think, with a group and got some through the Woodland Trust and we planted them around the park area. I know since then other trees have been planted. Up there, down there, are two of the most important nature reserves, not only in England, not only in Europe, but in the world. Um, these super nature reserves are such unique pockets of sanity, if that's the right word. But the key question they ask is, well, what can I do? Which is exactly the point that we were hearing earlier. So part of the project, we're supporting a lot of um, work through communities to help people think, OK, what is it that we could potentially do uh, within our own homes? but also through their influence. Um Low carbon grants is just one element of that wider project that Anne was talking about. We have a very short timeline to spend this money on, and I'm absolutely determined we won't send any of it back. So uh, yellow onions or brown onions, which is any type of onions is fine, but just for uh, color, uh, I'm using uh, the red onions. I'm just going to use half for today because we're just going to small make a small batch just for demonstration. That's a good one. <laughs> Ignore them. <laughs> kind of started to become obsessed with nature and, and everything that we're seeing and so since then we've just been like learning, we're still learning now so. There's a red leg round head here, have a look closer if you want to come down and just have a look underneath. So, yeah, fact number one, it's absolutely safe to touch any mushroom, I don't know if you know that. Um, We don't really know what happened, but we built a narrow boat. Um, <laughs> it was five. It was five years ago. It felt like it was something that we could just about achieve that we built, and it, we designed it so that it was quite open plan, so that it could host an artist in residence, but also it could have a workshop for about twelve women safely. So it's kind of versatile. And she was saying how more and more it's become about people connecting with each other and about not just growing things but growing themselves as a fragile yet resistant to despair and extinction. There is one curly outside the window. Its shadow is in the pond. This the oyster catch is a threatened species. <laughs> There are at least thousands of them, they are declining, so you've got to, you've got to, we've got to protect them. But when you... yes, the history of this in Chinese culture is like a family heirloom thing. This gets passed on from generation to generation. The idea is that you can keep taking and keep putting uh, vegetables. Keep those jars here because you're going to be doing the stuffing with them. Yeah, I mean, and it's delicious. It's really easy. <laughs> and you can put whatever you like in it. A bit more? You can have there, you can come back and try. I think this is 50 grams of spawn.
in a bag like this. And these bags have come from uh, the mushroom supplier. So what we do is we sprinkle that in. And that's it to take home as a kit. Also materials that you work with and ways in which you work with people and communities you um, collaborate with. This is, this is a garden that's actually based on permaculture principles. Um, and he also talks a lot about obviously taking care of the earth, but also taking care of people at the same time and how these things always need to be um, balanced. Um,